This video is going to be a little bit of a departure from the typical uh, film study uh, style video that I do that has a specific outcome. This one is going to be more to just raise a little bit of awareness on both sides of a coin that a lot of Ravens fans have been talking about recently and later on in the season. Um, it is interesting to me that some of those same statements about the Ravens route combinations were not made during the first eight games when the Ravens were averaging like 28 points per game. Um, of course, the offense short-circuited or shut down over a five- or six-game stretch late in the season. So I understand the concerns, absolutely. What I do not understand the concerns on is some of the concepts and some of the snapshots that I'm seeing on Twitter and some of the short videos I see on YouTube complaining about certain Ravens route concepts. So this one that I'm going to show is from a picture I saw earlier today or maybe yesterday. Uh, and this route, this route combination or is called mesh. This concept is called mesh. So what you typically have, one of the indicators that you that you can get pre-snap to let you know that mesh may be coming is you get a, a tightly aligned receiver, you know, to one side. In this case, a number one receiver backside of trips running back to the same side. And mesh typically, at least from what I understand about it, involves a couple of short, shallow drags. Uh, the running back typically running some kind of wheel or pushing um, to the bottom of the numbers to the sideline, trying to clear out uh, this space here, you know, in case in case this drag becomes an option for the quarterback or shallow drag, shallow under, whatever you want to call it. Same, similar concept here. What, what I know of mesh, the mesh that I have seen be uh, virtually unstoppable for one of the teams that I've been blessed enough to be around and help out, not necessarily on the offensive side of the ball. My my focus was defense, but the way that they ran mesh was this right here. And it was virtually unstoppable. Um, you have the Y, which in, in this case is Andrews, uh, running the hookup into the low hole area between the hashes. The hashes in high school were obviously a little wider than they are here in the NFL. The running back going up the um, up the sideline. And the guy that was the guy that was always open, the route that was always open for us was um, this one here coming from the side opposite the running back that route was always open in this area here because you'd get the curl flat defender or whoever was assigned to the running back you know turning and going with this route here so let's watch it i think i pause it at the point where the twitter video or twitter uh picture is apparently being shared and it's not meant as a personal attack on anyone who did share it or or the originator of the tweet, but the point is you're going to have times where uh, players are next to each other. And to to show a picture or a snapshot like this one and to say that whoever's calling the plays or whoever's coaching the receivers or whoever's coaching the offense uh, doesn't have a clue how to teach it, no, you you really don't understand the mesh concept. Because now, now, as was pointed out on one of the threads, why are, why are the two um, underneath drags, so, so this one here, and then Watkins, who came from back on this side. Why are the two? And, and those are drawn up a little deep. The line of scrimmage is, is here. So this route would have originated from somewhere in that area. And this Watkins route would have, you know, somewhere in there. But the po point was made, like, why are the two underneath, you know, drags or the shallow unders, why are they behind those guys? Well, because those guys originated at the line of scrimmage. These guys didn't run the route wrong. Look at, look at where they are, okay? These guys are on the line of scrimmage. They don't have two inside backers here dropping out to the hook area, dropping out to the hook area, and, and then the shallow drags would be underneath of them. They'd be in front of them. They would be bait for them, and then this angled hook, or excuse me, not angled hook, this, this hook into the middle of the field, the low hole area, is oftentimes open for inside linebackers that split or part like the Red Sea. So point is, these two guys are underneath of the routes by design. Now, if you want to say, why are we calling this concept when we have this coverage, I'm, I'm all with you. We are of one accord there. I don't think that calling the mesh concept against, um, against sticks is necessarily what we want to do. They get an easy peel off with the running back. These guys are in the window, as you'll see from the end zone angle. And the one thing I do have a problem with a little bit is, is Watkins runs his route here, and Andrew's route, which originated from inside there, is going to kind of stack on top of it. So, so there is some complaint to make there, I agree. It ends up being a sack. There's nobody to throw the ball to. When you get the end zone angle, you'll see 
that Lamar doesn't have a window to throw to either one of those shallow drags. And because Andrews is running all the way across the field, he can't really stick the thing in between the two guys that are dropping out. I think I think this guy drops out, and I'm not sure who else. Maybe it's 55, but I don't believe so. Somebody else drops out to the other side. Okay, so it's the two D tackles next to each other. So 70 drops out, and 91 drops out. And they are just kind of in the window for these two shallow drags that are, look, they're designed to run near each other. They're designed to run these guys near each other. There should be a point at which, and Lamar looks like he's had to f get flushed out to the left-hand side of the pocket here, there should be a point at which all three of these routes are pretty much in the same line. Uh, depending on whether it's man or zone, these two guys may get closer or further away from each other. Depend if it's man, they want to be closer, from what I know. If it's zone, they can be a little bit further. They can be leveled. But in any case, you see as Watkins runs his route across, coming from the right-hand side of the screen, off screen, Andrews is kind of stacked on top of it. That's not what I know about mesh, What what I but, but certainly – you know, the guys calling plays at the NFL level no more than I do. But what I think I know about Mesh is that this guy, Andrews, you can see his feet right here, would sit somewhere in this area. You know, so once these guys split, because certainly these D tackles are not trained to stop, you know, some of these pass concepts that, they're, that, that, that you would be running. Uh, they got away with one by being able to play that coverage. It is kind of embarrassing that the Ravens coaches were not able to exploit that coverage, if you ask me. Uh, but that picture uh, circulating on Twitter, about mesh is not showing poor route design at all other than Andrew's route you know but they had a reason for probably running that stacked um, shallow drag and then the over all right this is going to be a nicely spaced route from the same game I don't see people countering with good examples of this now I would say and I actually offered in a in a live stream that week after the Dolphins game this ball should be thrown to Mark Andrews, but the read probably goes, my guess is, the read goes one to, to Bateman, uh, two, two to Brown on this little comeback here, and then, and then three to Andrews. So maybe Andrews is later in the progression. Lamar is identifying Brown is open, and that's why he's throwing the football. He is open. He caught the football for, for about a five- or six-yard gain. I would like to see the ball thrown to Andrews there. But again, if he's later in the progression, we have to recognize that. But but in any case, you can recognize that there's certainly good spacing here. Right now, you're only using one half of the field. It's a half field read. There's nothing wrong with that. When you have a bad O-line, and sometimes you have to max protect. I mean, you can see what's happening here. You, can, you, don't, you really don't need to see. You know it's Villanueva, and there's a guy rushing off the edge. So he's probably getting beat. Lamar, in this case, stepped up and delivered a good throw to Marquise Brown. So hopefully you're seeing that, look, there's times where you can pause a play before the routes have developed. And you have to understand, sometimes you're getting three-step drop routes. Sometimes you're getting five-step routes. And sometimes you're getting seven-step routes. And occasionally on five- and seven-step routes, you are going to have receivers near each other because they're, they're stacking on top of each other to then split and put a defender in conflict. Uh, this is going to be one that, if you ask me, illustrates that concept a little bit. I think you got Le'Veon Bell here at running back and Tomlinson here at tight end, who initially is going to pass pro. And so what you'll see is them near to each other for a moment. I believe I paused the video. And then you'll see them split and clearly, very clearly put a linebacker in conflict. This is the one that, um, again, he throws to Marquise Brown a little high, maybe slightly late. And um, the defender is able to get there. And make contact. So Marquise Brown's coming from coming from this side across the field. You just have basically a clear out route by Sammy Watkins. He's just getting this DB out of the picture, throwing it over top of the curl flat player. A little high, maybe a touch late, and the safety's able to make a nice play and knock it down. But the one thing I want to illustrate for those of you that want to complain, and look, I, I mean, I complain about. Uh, the offense too, but I complain about all of them. It is interesting to me that people want to see the uh, wide receivers coach be the offensive coordinator, but at the same time, some of those people complain about receivers running routes into the same area. Who do you think was coaching those guys? I actually don't think that um, our wide receivers coach did a bad job at all. And, um, you know, I, I think he uh, was trying to teach Rashad Bateman on the fly because Bateman wasn't able to practice for seven weeks. And then right around the time Bateman came back, I believe that Sammy Watkins started to experience injury problems. 
you know, I think hopefully you see a really healthy team at the beginning of next year and we can get an accurate judgment on how good, you know, our receiving core is because I think they're pretty good. All right, Tomlinson is here. He was on the right side, and this is Bell. He was back in the backfield. So let's just track Bell, and then Tomlinson's going to block and then release. And I'm going to pause the video, and you're going to see they're right next to each other. They're right in the same space. Well, what happens is Bell is checking up and stopping, and Tomlinson is going to keep going. So what they've done is, because of the coverage the Dolphins are playing on this play, they put that guy in conflict. Now, you know, could we throw the ball to Tomlinson? Yeah, of course, absolutely. We could. You know, Br Brown is maybe earlier. I, I believe this is designed to go to Brown. You've got a clear out concept by Watkins, like I said, and you got Brown on this deep over concept. So I believe that the ball is designed to go here. I get it. Um, I, me personally, again, I'd like to see the ball go to Tomlinson. And a lot of us said that during the live stream, or, or in, in you guys' case, you typed it uh, during the live stream that I did uh, following this game on uh, Saturday night. But you can see right here that Bell and Tomlinson are quite close together, and the football field is, what, 53 yards wide, I believe. So, um, you know, you're like, some people may be like, well, why are they ne next to each other? Sometimes you have to in order to put people in conflict. Everybody's not standing there. All right, this is an empty concept, and I think you get a speed out here, and I think you get the, the deeper over concept here and the, and the under concept here. And for a brief moment, you'll see that down here at the bottom of the screen, two receivers look quote, close to each other, and then these two receivers. Now, there is some spacing here that we can see nicely from the all-22 angle. But, you could I mean, I could try to cheat if I wanted to and pause the video here and make it look like they're really closer. My point is be careful about some of the um, points that you try to make with a Twitter, with a, with a picture on Twitter or anywhere. You know, the video actually shows it better. So if you're able to get video and, and show the progression of it, then I would suggest doing that because sometimes that picture – you know, doesn't actually paint an, um, um, an accurate measure of how the routes are developing. Only reason I chose to address this is because um, I saw a picture shared on Twitter, and, and I, you know, it was interesting to me. You had receivers facing different directions, which to me says they're running in different directions. They're not all running in the same directions. Now, from that same play, that first one I showed you, obviously I illustrated that Watkins and Andrews were stacked on top of each other running the same direction. I did have some qualms with that one. I don't have qualms with this one at all. It is an incomplete pass. Um, and and we're, you're trying to get the ball to Duvernay, which I never have a problem with. The only issue I have is we when we would put our running backs out here, our running backs were not a receiving threat at all. Someone made a really cool point on Twitter earlier this week. They were like, man, it'd be great to have someone like Cordell Patterson, right, who could, uh, who's a running back who could get out there at receiver and run a route that could actually threaten your vertical. Anyway, we got Bunch up here. And, and to me, I don't like the call on third down at all. Uh, here's, the, here's the yard line. And to me, it looks like we're trying to get Andrews open as usual. By split, essentially, it's a deeper space concept, I think. This guy's getting off, and then Andrew's checking up somewhere in here. I don't see where the ball is. We can, we can throw the football now, you know, where Lamar is. If we're trying to get rid of the ball at the back of his drop, even still, you know, we're, we're, we're making a break here. We're making a break here, but we're, we're back to the football. We're back to the football, and Lamar has no choice but to take this under route to Josh Oliver, this delayed under route, sorry, because he passed pros initially. Why is he pass prone? Because we got Villanueva over there at left tackle. We had to do this in certain situation, in certain situations to make sure that Lamar didn't have a guy in his face. So in terms of the route combinations, I don't love them on this on this play. I don't like I'm not a huge fan of the timing of it, but you know, you got to get by, past the sticks or past the yard to gain. Um, I, my my problem would be with the play call, you know, with with what we're calling here on third down, um, a little bit more than the route design. But I understand if people have more of a problem with this than I do. Anytime that Bateman is not involved in the actual read to throw the football, I'm <laughs> I'm a little disappointed. And, and when I say that, look, look at the route he's running on third down. He's pressing vertical back to Lamar, not in any position for us to throw the football, unless, unless we're going to throw vertical on third and seven, which we could at times, but – you're, you're probably just trying to make the first down there. So you'll see Oliver here. He's going to pass pro initially and then and then release under. And I think it's this guy right here is going to make a nice play. Derwin James, I believe. And he fumbles. And he gets a strip, and Oliver fumbles, fumbles the football. One or two more plays here that illustrate uh, the same concept. 
well, this is this is a, a, a route that Bateman runs a couple of times, two plays in a row here, and we accomplish the task of getting him open in two uh, very different ways. The first way that we're going to do this, I think we're going to get clear out routes here by one and two. I'm not sure. I think Ricard goes in motion. I should just let it play instead of talking so damn much. But I think we get clear out routes here at the bottom side of the screen, a play fake with the LaVar. So what this what these clear out routes are going to do is they're going to allow Bateman to fit underneath into that vacated space once the DBs run off. And Lamar has to move a little bit because he's got pressure, almost almost immediate pressure from the edge, or he thinks he does, um, and, he, and, he's, and he steps up. Did he have to step up? I mean, maybe not. Maybe he didn't have to step up. But in any case, he steps up a little bit and make, makes it a hell of a throw. So you can see the concept working, right? A deep over route from the other side. I actually call it a climb route. That's the terminology I know. But in any case, deep over, whatever you want to call it. And underneath of the clear out routes, that's one way to get that accomplished. There's, certainly, you can't make any complaint with these routes, right? I mean, even though right now you've got a football field, you know, that's wide from sideline to sideline, and you've got three receivers right near each other. I say right near each other. These, these two guys are 12 yards away. These two guys are eight, nine, eight yards away, seven yards away. You know, these two guys maybe ten. So I don't know what the Pythagorean theorem is, if that's a, if that's a right triangle or not. But in any case, they're they're closer than some people would think, depending on your amount of football knowledge. Sometimes the clear out route, and and the and the deep over or climb concept, you know, it's it's going to be near to each other. This this time same, um, similar route, but looks from the opposite direction. Here's Bateman here. And he's going to run. It's a little deeper than that. Bateman's going to run a similar route. And what the Ravens are going to do is you got one corner down here. And he would be responsible for the tight end, which I think is this case in Ricard. So let's say Ricard just ran a vertical. This corner's going to guard him. All right. Obviously, it's a mismatch for the Bengals. That guy can cover him easily. But what the Ravens do is something they did against the Raiders multiple times. They did against the Chiefs as well. He's going to give a run block look at first to try to hold uh, this corner. And then release out into the flats. If if he does a pass pro block, that's okay too. In any case, twenty is is reading Ricard, and then this route is designed to hit over the top of him, forcing you know this delayed route by Ricard forces him even if he's getting off to then go ahead and come up and cover him and open up uh, some space for Bateman. The opposite of the clear out concept, but it accomplishes the same task, right? It gets that space on the other side of the field, opposite Bateman, open. And it's a really nice throw by Lamar. Hopefully you could, I think I gave you the end zone angle here. I did not. My bad. So it's a nice throw. I wish you had the end zone angle. I forgot that I didn't include it. Play action. Here's Ricard. You know, looking like he's blocking someone, and he is. And then he releases late to hold the corner. This inside linebacker, if you had the end zone angle, you'd see how great of a throw it was by Lamar. He almost tips it. I think that's, I think that's Pratt, I believe. No, it's not Pratt. It's 59. I don't know his name. Good player, too. In any case, you see, you know, the route design there was pretty good. Hopefully, I think you, you see that. Now, it, it's a one receiver route, though. That would be the complaint that I would have if I wanted to be really picky. You know, you've got you got Bateman here, one. We're n we're not gonna throw the ball to Ricard here. That is solely designed to pull this corner up. So so maybe you've got one, and then you know, if no one else is open too, but that's Andrews is all the way across the field. This route here is not a part of the progression at all. So you've got a one receiver or maybe two receiver route, but really I think one. All right, I love this concept. It's kind of a giveaway for the Ravens, though. I'm surprised the Browns didn't pick up on it. When you've got the back on the same side as Andrews, and Andrews is in the slot. So Andrews is off the line of scrimmage, but next to the tackle. You, Especially on the right-hand side, you've almost always got an RPO. I shouldn't say always, but it's a pretty high percent. And you can see Lamar puts the ball in the running back's gut. Clowney is going this way to take the running back. So if it is a read, which it kind of looks like it is, if it is a read, Lamar has read it correctly. Kept the football. Wasn't sure if he wanted to go to Andrews or to Brown. Throws it to Brown. Reminds me of that play I did a video on uh, about the Raiders. Uh, a play for Lamar about uh, against the Raiders where he made three decisions in like 1.8 seconds or something like that. This one's pretty quick as well. But you can see there is a time where these two receivers are stacked on top of each other. But one guy's going this way, and the other guy's going this way or checking up. 
that's typical so you're going to be able to take pictures sometimes depending on it you know how much of a point you're trying to make or or how much you're um upset with greg roman and and keith williams and, and t martin depending on how much you're upset with them but point is you're going to get those situations where you're going to be able to take a picture that doesn't really illustrate the actual play and the flow of the players or the direction the players are moving so i caution against using those i would try to use the video if if um if possible We've gone on pretty long with this video i think we got one more play Hopefully you guys see my point. Look, are there times where the routes are near too near to each other? Yeah, of course, absolutely. Are there times where um, where we wish the design was better? Yes, there is. But but I'm going to give you guys another point. And I haven't addressed this in many videos. There are also times where, and this is one of the reasons why the sticks cover zero coverage um, really did a number on the Ravens' offense because it it took away one of the things that I think was happening as the year went on. One of the things that was happening is when we were running some vertical routes, the receivers were reading the middle of the field. And if the middle of the field was open, then they would just progress to the middle of the field and try to hit the, hit the whole shot versus cover two, you know, over top of the Mike linebacker in between the two safeties. Or, or they would try, if the middle of the field was closed, then they, then they would try to check up into that low hole area above um, inside linebackers, you know, taking, taking zone drops in, in, into the hook area. So my point is, the Ravens receivers were were reading the coverage in some cases as they ran the route, and Lamar was reading it as well. So what happened when teams started to play the sticks coverage, cover zero, just bring max pressure and play off man. Really, it's not off man. It's just a they're just reading the quarterback size. But in any case, what they did was they took that all of that away. They took away all of the advancements that the Ravens receivers and Lamar and the coaching staff had installed, and we saw earlier in the year. We didn't see that as much as the year progressed. Of course, Tyler Huntley and then and then Josh Johnson played a game too, so we would expect that you wouldn't see some of those uh, type plays and type reads from them because they're just getting the ball out, trying not to turn the ball over, trying not to turn the football over. You definitely have a, a situation here where the guys are near to each other, right? So if you want to um, complain about it, you can – this is not exactly a flood concept, but it works out like a flood concept. I would have thought Andrews would make his cut slightly sooner, but he's getting he's getting chipped just a little bit by the inside linebacker number 44. But basically, you've got two clear out routes here at the bottom of the screen, Brown and Bateman. And then Andrews is this deeper, sorry, this deeper out route here. And then the running back, here, it doesn't necessarily work out like a flood concept. I mean, it some, somewhat is. Um, I would think that the, the back, we would want to back out sooner so that we could actually get, get a read here. Lamar definitely determines to throw the football to the back because maybe he's not seeing where Andrews is going to be open. He's not Maybe he's not sure what this corner is going to do, or he didn't even look at the corner, to be to be honest with you. He's looking at the safety, if you ask me. He's looking right here. And so he's not going to wait for Andrews because he doesn't want to try to throw it over whoever the curl flat player is. So this is the guy that would be, you know, theoretically put in conflict by these two routes. If he if he were to, you know, jump the the running back for whatever reason, or if he would not get this depth, then then we would be looking at throw in the deeper out to Andrews. If he stays at depth here like he did, so maybe that's what Lamar looked at then throw it to the running back out to the flats. Now it's just a little bit of an off-base throw. But if you wanted to be picky, you could. And you could pause the video right here and say, how's Lamar supposed to throw the ball to someone? Who's he supposed to throw the ball? Well, the point is, if this guy does his job in holding the curl, so the, the curl is, the hook is, it's a, it's a canted view, but the hook is somewhere around in there. The curl is around in there, and, and the flat, I used to always tell the kids it was connected, is somewhere around in there. Those That could be a little bit wide or drawn, but you get the point. So this guy's job is to get the curl and then the flat. So the flat's being threatened, so now he can go. I think that's Flowers, 33. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any feedback on um, things I said or things I didn't cover from a particular play, go ahead and put it in the comment section. I'm trying to add my own little two cents. 
um, and trying to be a little balanced about judging the Ravens route concepts because certainly there were times where they should be judged. But there are also times where we look at them and we're so angry, me, myself included, about how the game worked out, particularly the Dolphins game. I was, I'm still pissed off about that one. I still think the Ravens are a, a better team than the Dolphins and still think that they should have beat them. Um, but, but a poor job of game planning by the coaches and adjusting during the game, you know, if, if you ask me, I'm talking about offensively, really short-circuited any chance for the Ravens to try to win. So I get it when people are frustrated because, you know, I was and still am frustrated by that loss down there. But just be careful about which plays you're, um, you're noting as poor design or poor execution by the players because in some cases, um, you know, we need to look at the video instead of just a picture.